Welcome to Tony Unleashed, the podcast where we unleash the truth about all things pets. Our research and anecdotal evidence matched with pet expert interviews will help you help your pet thrive. We are here to answer questions, divulge information, and spread awareness about what's really going on in the world of pets. I am your co-host, Emily Taylor, pet nutrition enthusiast and healthy pet products employee for the past six years. And I'm Tony Shalaski, owner of Healthy Pet Products with three locations in the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area, and recently expanded to Port Charlotte, Florida. Welcome to the show. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Tony Unleash the podcast. I am in the house with Emily Claire, former co-host. And now with Raw Dynamic, and we're talking about protein sources, quality of protein sources, allergies, and we're going to kind of get a little deep into this topic because we have conversations about protein allergies and allergies in general all the time because dogs and cats are a mess. Yep. Yep. So how do we fix them? I mean, protein, true protein allergies are rare. So why do those protein tests come or those allergy tests come back with all those protein? Well, I don't know. (laughs) I think I know. (laughs) Well, okay. You give me what you think and then I'll say what I think. (laughs) I think it's because of leaky gut. Okay. Interesting. I was going to take a different spin on it. I agree. But I also think that because of the sourcing, Mm. so you know how like some, some are hot, some are cool and some are like warm on our body and create inflammation. I think it's all inflammation based. Yes. I don't know if it's like to the inflation that we get from consuming those because Mm -hmm. everyone's gut works differently. But I also am wondering how that's linked to the quality of those ingredients because a chicken amino acid profile that's really clean and well, humanely raised, antibiotic hormone free, will that still cause that same reaction from a low quality, highly processed Mm -hmm. inflamed chicken? Mm -hmm. So I think it's inflammation based. I think we're both right. I think so. I think it's all linked together. In other words, chickens and pigs and cows from my friend Kelly's farm, where they literally roam free, Mm -hmm. their amino acid profile Mm -hmm. will read completely different than factory farmed animals. Right. Not to mention even the cortisol level. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So this is another, I think it's my own theory. I don't think I read it anywhere. So cortisol is our stress hormone. Factory farmed animals are in very stressful environments. So they are pumping out a ton of cortisol and cortisol affects the adrenal glands, which helps us to manage day in and day out stress. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's what it's testing then. Yeah. But can you test cortisone levels in saliva? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I've I've had my own tested. So then it's stress-based. I I think that we're on, I think we're right in in all three factors. Huh. Then they're often trucked to butchering just the trucking is stressful so then we're adding more stress Mm -hmm. and they're inhumanely euthanized so it is just stress upon stress upon stress Mm -hmm. you know whereas at kelly's farm they are so happy i feel like it goes back to the old saying in math garbage in garbage out when you're using your calculator yes garbage in a dog yes garbage out. Absolutely. Or cat. You are what you ate is something else I've heard people say. Mm -hmm. I mean, at Kelly's farm, just like the Native American Indians would do and a lot of hunters do, when they do kill, they say a prayer, they thank the universe, they thank God, they are thankful for being provided food to eat. Mm -hmm. And it's just a different environment. Right. So. Right. And the balance of amino acid and essential fatty acids mm-hmm. is a lot better too. And okay. those are essential. Yeah. So I had Thanksgiving at Kelly's this year and it was their own turkey. I have never in my life really ate such a good turkey. What made it like different? It was so moist. Yeah. And it wasn't like a salty moist, like yeah. a brine moist. Right. It Naturally. was. Naturally. It was the flavor was 
so rich. It was so good. Wow. It was so good. I can't even explain it. Wow. Grains and starches and sugars and hormones and antibiotics inflame the body. Yes. And then yes. we feed that body, that yes. inflamed body to our animals and then they're then inflamed. And then we're inflamed too. Yeah. Because when Cause we eat them. If we eat them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. So what do you think about lab meat? <laughs> I am not a fan. I really am not. I haven't been since day one. Really? No. I would eat lamb, uh, lab made meat. I, I think I would. I, I, I don't doubt that you would. I, I would try it. I don't I, think I would like it because I haven't had meat in so long. I think it would taste bad, but... I guess you could say I'm a purist. Mm-hmm. I believe in moderation and everything. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think of the analogy when Bob and I, Bob and I did a section of the AT, the Appalachian Trail, and we were in this town in Virginia, and I can't remember what it was, but I remember stopping into a shop or something and talking about it, and they said, well, you're on the wrong side of the road. And I'm, we're like, what do you mean? And well the trail is actually on the other side. And if you're a purist, you really want to walk on the other side Mm -hmm. because that's the legitimate trail, not this side of the road. Mm -hmm. So I guess, you know, I just really fall on that philosophy. You're a vegetarian. I am not, but I try to eat humanely raised and in moderation, not Mm -hmm. go crazy with it. That's kind of what I mean by being a purist. Like, and I would, I would agree with that. I mean, I think if I, I just, I'm at the point where it just tastes so bad. Um, well, it's been how many years? 12. Yeah. I could, I just don't think I could really bring myself to it, but mm-hmm. I wish I would. And I think I have that same mentality that it's all in moderation, yeah, not in excess. And we do the CSA. So even the fruits and vegetables that we eat and we cook with are in season. Yep. And supporting local farms. Right. 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 Which is really important. It is. It is. Um, okay. But anyways, inflammation. Yes. Allergies. And also nutritional deficiencies. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes dogs that have flaky skin, brittle hair, brittle skin and coat, mm-hmm. and inflammation, we could be seeing more of a nutritional deficiency. And I say that because the word essential for dogs and cats is in front of amino acid and essential fatty acid. And when we overly processed food, Mm -hmm. we lose the integration of both of those essential macronutrients. So therefore we're not feeding enough of it to our animal or we're feeding a um, processed processed form of it. So they're not metabolizing it and utilizing it properly. And I think that's what we're seeing is inflammation and skin and coat issues there. I'm not saying this is for every single case. Right. And I think that there are some really, you know, dogs getting fed what it can get fed and living in a happy home. I think that's wonderful and amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just talking about like when we're when we're conversing with people who bring this up as an issue, it's something to consider. Yes, I agree with you. It's another reason why we really are encouraging people to feed less processed food to their pets. Mm-hmm. Trying to add in raw food to the kibble diet, even if you're on a highly rated kibble, a higher quality kibble, we really are still feeding that inflammation by feeding kibble. Mm -hmm. No matter what the protein, Mm -hmm. right? Right. And then there's the leaky gut theory, which is also my theory. Mm -hmm. So I think from our processed diets, our pets have leaky gut. Okay. Let's talk about that. Refresh, because I haven't talked about leaky gut in a long time. So define that. I usually tell people, and I use my fingers, you know, do you remember the church Mm -hmm. and the steeple Mm -hmm. and all the people? So I would picture all the people inside. Okay. So that's the inside of the intestinal tract. Your fingers are like little villi, Mm -hmm. little, literally little fingers inside that help to absorb the nutrients. So where those villi fit into your intestinal system become little, little tears. And mm-hmm. that's where leaky gut, that's what leaky gut actually is. Mm-hmm. So the proteins are leaking through into the bloodstream, into the system and our bodies. And this is humans too. Mm-hmm. recognize those as foreign bodies mm-hmm. and attack it. Mm-hmm. And that's where the inflammation and the allergy mm-hmm. air quotes here mm-hmm. is seen. Mm-hmm. 
Well, then that also would then infect the digestion even more because the Mm -hmm. pancreas is responsible for eliminating the digestive enzymes in the body. Yeah. And so then they would be releasing less because the nutrients is getting absorbed into the bloodstream and isn't filtering through. Yeah. So the whole system isn't working properly. Yes. Yes. Excellent point. And then the liver is the main organ that most of the blood goes through. Mm -hmm. And so the liver is very affected by that Mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then if you feed liver from an animal that has leaky gut to another animal. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And so on and so forth. And so on and so forth. We are where we are today. (laughs) Again, I, but I think the fact that we just came up with three reasons. Yeah. This is all happening Mm -hmm. is a testament to why it's not easy to fix. Right. I think it's, and you have to treat the whole body. You have yeah. to look at every 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 factor, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Bone broth heals leaky gut, so you mm-hmm. gotta feed bone broth. Mm-hmm. You want it gelatinous. You want it yes. thick. Yes. You want it simmered for a long time. Yes. It's hydrating, which reduces inflammation because the body needs hydration. Mm-hmm. It also has natural source of a glucosamine and chondroitin collagen mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. So bone broth is different than stock. Yeah. Way different. Because stock has meat in it Mm -hmm. and a lot of vegetables. And not cooked as long. Okay. And it's more for flavor. It's more for flavor. Okay. So bone broth is just cooking the bones. For 24 to 48 hours. Right. With a smidge of Bragg's apple cider vinegar in there. Yep. Some people, I mean, vegetables can be added in. Some supplements can be added in. Mm -hmm. Your... um, Turmeric. Yes. And your species... Specific probiotics. That's hard to say. Yeah. Species specific probiotics. And when when I do it at home, just kind of throw in any old vegetables that are going bad too. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't hurt. Doesn't hurt. Just don't do onions. Yeah. I think we have to attack these allergies, the this inflammation. So the scratching and the chewing and the licking and the that's that's the body's that's the body literally attacking itself. Mm-hmm. And it's very difficult to get pet parents to be patient. Yeah. In that same breath, it is difficult for to get pet parents to be patient, and it's also difficult for them to commit to such a long-term, slow Mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. But I also think it scares customers who do have a healthy dog from feeding chicken or beef. Yeah. Sometimes people are scared of chicken and beef. They really are. Yeah. And that's so unnecessary to some extent. Yeah. Because you want to rotate. You do want to rotate. And the chicken and the beef typically are your more cost-effective, well, chicken especially. Right. So this kind of screws up my whole system within healthy pet products in a way, because the first thing we do is say, get a five strand allergy test done. And honestly, I think I've heard Dr. Becker say this also is all inflated. These protein allergies, she also, I think, feels the same way. Mm -hmm. So do I discount all that? Like, do I, do I just not tell people anymore to do the allergy test? Like, what do you... And just focus on reducing processed diet. I mean, I don't know. I'm not, I don't know. But yeah. I would say like if I was doing this again with sweet pea, I would use my allergy test. If that's what's inflaming her right now in the state of her body, how it is, it might not inflame her when I strengthen it. Mm-hmm. It might be so inflammatory when I strengthen her body. Right. So it might not be as relevant, which I have found with her because I do give her the raw dynamic chicken treats and I do give her the turkey treats Hmm. and I'm less scared to do it. Mm -hmm. And I have thrown in rabbit where Mm -hmm. before I was so strict on like just lamb and goat for a long time and, um, you know, strengthening her body and her immune system so that she can consume. And, you know, maybe you, maybe you healed her leaky gut. I don't know that I'd say it's healed per se. Well, (laughs) I think it's getting, it's more managed. Okay. I think it's more managed. Yeah. I think she went through a uh, fat deficiency too. And that's kind of what started me on this kick because she lost a lot of hair. Oh. And hair loss and like fineness of hair. Huh. 
um, is a direct symptom of a fat deficiency. And then really understanding the importance of essential fat, fatty acids and Uh like really clean, high quality fats that come from muscle meat or like other really clean sources and how important that is. Yeah. Because dogs will burn fat before they burn carbohydrates. Yeah. And so I really supplemented her on that too and getting her, making sure she was getting enough fats too. And you did that with sardine anchovy oil or sardine? Just sardine anchovy and doing the raw dynamic lamb mostly because it's the heart first. And then um, doing a lot of just other random stuff, a lot of eggs. What what do you think about coconut oil? I haven't used it in a while. I don't know. I haven't done my research on it. But the lactic acid in it is supposed to be good and the lactic acid and the short chain and the long chain fatty acids are beneficial in there. Right. I don't know the sugar content or if that's even. I don't think that's even relevant. Mm-mm. I can't get Layla to eat it. Bo will lick it right off the spoon. Kenny will eat it. Yeah. The cat will eat it. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I could try the flakes maybe. Oh, well, yeah. Crunchy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know Great Danes don't really have thick coats, but I'd still like to try to thicken her up a little bit. But I think, I mean, so many people also come in asking for low fat food. Oh. They're scared of pancreatitis. I hate when people want low, uh, low fat food. But I it's hate a, it. yeah, you want brain function and muscle loss, and the, yeah. and and a lot of times it's a senior dog that has to go on a low fat food, and I'm like, no, mm-hmm. or I'm like, yes, you just had an episode of pancreatitis, so yes, let's do some low fat temporarily, yeah, and then let's work back into this in a. Obviously, I'm not a vet, but like, there's different variations of pancreatitis. Like, they could be secreting the digestive enzymes at the wrong time. Yeah. We can have it, not enough. Right. Um, and I think depending on what level and what variation of pancreatitis it is, acute or chronic, mm-hmm. depends on how you can go approach the fat. Right. And also there's trans fat in a lot of foods out there. Mm-hmm. There's canola oil, mm. vegetable oil. Like that's not a complete fat Mm-mm. and that's denature is, and it's the so nutrients. inflammatory. Yeah. Like what we're talking about, we're not talking about fat. We're talking about fat from the protein source itself. Yeah. Or other natural sources like yeah. hemp seeds, flax seeds, sardine, anchovy, salmon. Sure, has some too. Sunflower seeds. Mono and polyunsaturated fats. That's what you want. And the last thing you want is canola oil. Just, yeah. just look up YouTube and punch in <laughs> the processing of canola oil. Yeah. And I don't know, I won't be able to speak to like cold pressing and the pro- like processing oil. I don't, I don't know anything about that. Yeah. I don't know either. But you shouldn't need it if you're feeding a high quality protein. Right. Right. Essentially is what we're right. saying. And high quality, we are talking about humanely raised. Yep. Responsibly sourced. Responsibly sourced. Cage free. Happy animals. Antibiotic hormone free. Yep. That's the way to go. It matters. Mm -hmm. Back to the cortisol thing. I even talked to, because, you know, I source bones and some body parts locally for the Tony Unleashed brand. And one of my friends that's a butcher was telling me a story about a truckload of cattle coming in and they came in on a Friday. And he's like, I try to avoid that because then I have to keep them alive until Monday. And I was like, what do you mean keep them alive? Like, are they arriving like in such bad shape? And he literally said to me, he's like, well, the transportation is very hard on them. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yep. Wow. Yep. And that's sad. Yeah. Yeah. And he said a lot of times, you know, I can't keep them alive. Wow. So they, as soon as they get them in, they try to get the processing done as soon as possible. Wow. So there's a lot we don't know. Oh, yeah. And nor do I want to know. Yeah, I know. I know there's so many different slaughter methods too. Mm-hmm. I was speaking to a um, a woman. I was in Vermont for an open house and she breeds Swiss mountain dogs, mm-hmm. but she's has a couple kids and they live on this farm and they process a lot of their own food. And so I was like, how do you manage the trauma of your children seeing an animal dying? Yeah. And she's like, well, 
it's only trauma for you. Right. Because that's not what you're used to. Right. They're raised in it. They're raised in it. And Mm -hmm. like we live off of this Mm -hmm. and we use every ounce of energy. I asked her, I was like, what happens? What do you do with a calf if it dies? And she's like, that would be such a waste of that animal's life and energy if we didn't use it. And she's like, we feed our dogs it. Yeah. Or we find other ways to use it because- It's like, how do you bury such a large animal? And she's like, why would you bury it? Right. It would be such a waste of the life. And that is the normal way. The way we are now is not how we've been for centuries. Yeah. Like that's more normal, which is what people can't comprehend. Yeah. And that's, I mean, when Kelly at their farm, when they process, they process their own chickens. Mm -hmm. They, they don't do their cattle and their pigs, but when they do the chickens, it is a family day. Yeah. The entire family is there, including the toddlers and everybody is a part of it and everybody's helping and everybody sees everything. Yeah. And they do, they, they, it's like a ceremony almost. Mm Mm-hmm. And I can definitely have respect for that. I mean, I know it's like sad because it is a life, but if you're using that life and that energy responsibly yes, and naturally, yes, there's carnivores for a reason. Yeah. 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 Even when it comes to planting vegetables, when I grew up, everybody had a tomato patch out mm-hmm. back. Everybody had a little bit of a garden mm-hmm. that they could have their own lettuce, their own tomatoes their own spices and things like everybody had that right and that was normal and everyone still should have that it mm-hmm. it would be less pressure in the world yeah we all should do a little more of our own thing right and we would eliminate waste right Because a lot of the things that get grown to go to the grocery stores get thrown out. And we would probably eliminate the amount of pesticides that are used. Exactly. And water. Yes. And composting. If everyone compost, like there's so many things that we should get back to. Mm -hmm. And having chickens, having, you know, a goat. Yeah. A cow or whatever. That's what's normal. Mm -hmm. Did you say everything you wanted to say about? I think so. Responsible sourcing and fats and everything. Okay. That's all for now. 